Good. How do you achieve the barakah of time? Now, number one would be none other than that. There are two things. Number one would be the barakah of time is achieved by focusing on the known blessed timings. There are certain timings of the day and night in which doing things uh, have proven to be more productive than others. For example, in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, the Prophet once made dua, Burika li ummati fi bukuriha. In the narration, Allahumma barik li ummati fi bukuriha. Right? Ya Allah, bless my people in their time and their efforts when they do their affairs in the beginning of the day. So that is why back then in the Malay society, for example, mak-mak suka cakap, lepas subuh jangan tidur. Pintu berkat ada dekat pagi hari. That is not just some hearsay. It's actually coming from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the Prophet would go out to preach and to attend to important affairs, the Prophet would begin in the morning. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would send the army to battle, the Prophet would send the, the, the armies in the morning. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would send the companions to do business, he would also send people to do it in the morning as well. So you need to look at certain timings that produce the most amount of barakah. So one timing will be the beginning of the day. Concerning ibadah particularly is none other than the night, if it's ibadah. So if it's in the day, it's in the end, that. Now at night, scholars differ over the exact timing of the night. The most important timing will be two things. So just now we say what? Morning. Number two, night. As for night, the best of the night would be the middle of the night. And in the other hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, the last third of the night. Dua, ibadah are in the end increased in regards to their effectiveness onto a person. Dua is greatly accepted by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in these two timings. So that would be in regards to timing. Now the second situation would be not only to look at the blessed timing, it is to always avoid procrastination. There's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam which is an important hadith whenever you learn concerning eschatology or the ends of time. The Prophet says, when a person is planting a tree, he's trying to put a seed into the ground, right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, and then he sees the sun rising from the west, which is none other than one of the last signs of Akhirah, signs of Qiyamah, sorry, right? Do not stop, but rather continue doing that particular job. Finish it. And the idea is to not waste time thinking about something, but rather to always act upon it. Plan it, understand it correctly, and then put in the effort down. So procrastination is one thing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam hated. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, there are two parts of his thought process. One is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam kana da'im al-fikri, kana da'im al-fikri. Kana da'im al-fikri, sorry. He was always in constant thought, right? Now, this is where it comes to the idea that you cannot be able to do anything effectively until you have planned it correctly and understood what you're doing. So, da'im al-fikri, Rasulullah, he's always thinking about something deeply. He masters the nature of something and then when he's understood it, automatically about Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi will be initiative. In the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, the companions will say, when you see the Prophet walk, it is as if that he's always walking towards something that is most important. He will not be like us, kita jalan ni dengan headphone kita boleh joget dengan nyanyi to the song, whatever that might be. Kita jalan la 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 la, like nothing's happening, like, that, like time has frozen still. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam knew what we will call as the urgency of of time. And that comes from the notion that in reality, we don't know when things end. Life simply means one thing. Life is the opportunity to do good. And death is the cessation of so. And the Prophet says, Inna a'malu bi that the value of a person in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greatly dependent on what he did last. So whether you're going to be greatly rewarded by Allah or you're going to be punished by Allah, you're seen to be highly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or seen to be lowly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the clue is what you did last. 
So if Allah Subhanahu wa takes us and may Allah Subhanahu wa takes us in husnul khatimah inshallah, if Allah takes us and before we die, the last things that we did was done other than good things, worship, helping people out, contributing to the causes of society and so on and so forth is indicative of who we actually are. But wal-iyazubillah, if there's a person who the last thing that he did before he died was none other than pergi dangdut ke? Or do bad things, that lifestyle. So what he did last is indicative of his entire value. The issue, however, is nobody knows when he is going to go away. Kalau tahu, senang. Tanya malaikat maut. Assalamualaikum, maut. Maut yang nama dia. Assalamualaikum. Yang main main. Right? Uh, nak datang bila agak ni? Eh? Dia cakap, this particular date, bulan depan, tengah bulan, lebih kurang time macam gini. So sebelum tu, one week before that, I start act to do good. You can do that, right? But the reality is, nobody knows. So that is why it's important to always be consistent. That's the term istiqamah, right? To always be on doing good. So hopefully that when we are doing good, Allah subhanahu wa will saw that we die on that particular situation. I mean. Right? So this is in the end where we get the blessing of time. So number one would be to do things at the blessed timing, hoping that whatever that we do in this in those particular timing are in the end multiplied furthermore. Number two would then be to always do things in the very best way possible, to not procrastinate and to be urgent in regards to our timing. Wallahu ta'ala a'ala wa